Welcome in, everybody. We're today we're checking out unpopular opinions. We're gonna die on some crazy hills today. Let's see what let's see what we got. It's more enjoyable to skip the ending of a movie. I usually skip the last 10 to 15 minutes of a movie. What's the point of viewing it? By that point, you've already seen all the interesting themes. And this person is just no. No, you're wrong. You don't, clearly you don't like the story. If you don't want to read, if you don't want to watch to the end of it, you don't like the story, so you don't really like the movie. If you liked the movie, the story would draw you in and you'd want to finish it. So, like, this person's wrong. That's, that is un unpopular, definitely. It's not healthy for your partner to be your only friend. I agree. I know a handful of people who don't have any friends outside of their partners that live near them. They may have friends and family that they talk to, text, or see every now and then, but they don't have friends that live near them. Or, is this about me? I feel like this, I, I moved. I got married and moved away from where I lived. And this, I feel like this, this, uh, this is about me. Or they have friends that are co-workers. This is this definitely about me. But they wouldn't hang out with them outside of work. For example, everyone should have someone that they can ask to meet them for coffee or something that isn't their partner. I'm not saying it's unhealthy to be friends with your partner, just that you need to have friends outside of your relationship as well. These couples that I know have little outside perspective and it's very obvious when spending time with them. Adding, I'm just saying this as a married, introverted, homebody with social anxiety. Just because you get married doesn't mean you shouldn't be maintaining friendship. Yeah, I kind of, I really agree with that. Um, as someone that, like, all, it's not that I don't, you know, want to have friends around here. It's just proposing to your significant other in a crowded place is cringy attention begging behavior and should be seen as a red flag it's true it's kind of like a gaslighting uh, tactic i think you can make many conclusions about the nature of one's relationship if others if other proposes other i think you can make many conclusions about the nature of one's relationship if other proposes other in a crowded place trying to turn every stranger's attention to the moment yelling can i have your attention please in a mall can i have your attention i can't do it you know, proposing at a sport event where this when the spectator camera is pointing at you etc the most genuine proposal would be that there are just the two of you maybe some other people whose attention you don't demand if you propose the other in a crowd, crowded place in hope of extra attention, it tells that some part of your relationship is just for show, or worse, that you are peer pressuring your partner to say yes so they wouldn't embarrass you. That's what I mean. It's like a gaslighting thing almost where you're like, you know, how, how can you say no in front of all these people? See, it's like a manipulation thing. and in the moment that there's all these people they say yes and then they don't really want to but then they don't have the heart to to say no and it, it, it's it's a weird thing don't i don't know it's a hundred percent red flag can you still do it sure if you want you shouldn't none of us want to see that um the rest of the people clapping and all that they're just pretending they don't really give a shit you've ruined their night You've definitely ruined their night. Their, 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 their girlfriend or whatever is going to have a conversation that they don't want to have because of you. Go fuck yourself. A glass of water in the morning is more effective than coffee. Nope. Not even, not even. This person, there's a cold, coffee-less place in hell for this person. Kids don't owe their parents anything. As the title goes, kids don't owe their parents anything. If a parent gives their kids the bare minimum, such as food, water, places to sleep, etc., that's something that should have been expected from people that have kids. If a parent has a kid and expects the kid to look after them when they are old, 
all their expects to get stuff from the kid, they are selfish. I remember my dad telling me that, you know, my mom once asked them when they got older where they were going to get, how they were going to buy weed. Uh, and my dad assured her that's why they, they had children, because then, then we could get them the weed. Thank God the government legalized it, because I'm not selling my dad any drugs. He's too poor. As a parent means nothing. As a parent, I agree. People prefix opinions. Oh, I see. I just did that. With, uh, with as a parent, uh, as if getting spunked, <laughs> getting spunked in, or spunking in someone, somehow makes your opinion more valid. I mean, sometimes though the issue is about kids, but still, being a parent, everybody's allowed their opinion. It doesn't make anybody's opinion more valid it just means the person that has kids understands the, th the issue that involves having kids to make a better opinion but it doesn't you know being a parent doesn't mean your opinion is more valid than those who chose who choose not to have kids nobody cares if you're a parent or not get over yourself and as a parent as a parent i definitely kind of agree that people do like to use this oh you don't have kids so you don't know kind of argument and because i used to have form opinions about people's shitty children and how they be interact with their shitty children in public and stuff and people be like you don't understand you don't have kids well now i have a kid and i still feel the same way about all those people shut your fucking kid up i'm on the bus i don't want to listen to your kids scream you, you're not even trying to shut your kid up. I understand that kids are going to scream and shit. My kid look a little shit sometimes, but sh fucking make the effort. As a parent, I do agree with this opinion, though. Plushies and stuffies are for all ages. My wife has too many of those squishmallows. We're not even going to... We're not going to pay any attention to this because... My wife's got too many squishmallows, and no, they're for children. They're for children and, and adults that aren't my wife. A lot of dogs are low-key annoying. Straight up. This is based as fuck. No, I'm not a hater of animals. Not a hater. No. I understand. I, I am still on board. In fact, I'm actually... I'm actually an ex- pet sitter, and I am currently a zookeeper zoologist, so you hate animals, you hate Harambi. It's just so, it's just that so many of them are always trying to get up in your face and make business, make too much noise too often, needing damn near constant attention and won't leave you alone. The whining, the barking, the slobber, the stink. They roll around and grow shit in the yard and end up needing a bath, jumping on you, scratching and bruising you, hogging your space. I've met hundreds of dogs. Now he's bragging how many dogs he's met. I've met hundreds of dogs and approximately half of them are like this to some extent. This is not to say that I hate dogs. Do I dislike them? No. Do I love them though? No. Don't even get me started on huskies. See, I, I, I think he's, he's kind of blaming dog owners for, for their dogs, for the, the, you know, the dogs for their dog owners. Like, yeah, the dogs will do that. Animals, dude, dude you're a zoologist. The monkeys will throw, will throw shit at each other if you let them. But if you don't, you know, you gotta not let them do that. So if your dog's running around rolling and shit and you're just letting him roll and shit, yeah, your dog's a shitty dog. And, you know, I'm just saying, this guy is blaming annoying dog owners. Uh, uh, he's blaming the dogs for their annoying owners. And also, he's made it sound like, you know, mo it was like the majority of dogs. But then he gets down here. And it's suddenly it's only about approximately half of the... That's not a majority. That's, you know... 
That's half. That's 50%. That's not a majority. Majority is more. More than half of them. Half of them is not a majority. This dude... I still... As a parent, I still agree with this opinion. I can't stand the standard greetings or small talk. Here, here. How are you doing? Maybe the worst of the bunch. It's just a greeting you get. Exactly. Oh, how are you today? Nobody fucking cares. Tell them the truth. Just be like, shit. What's going on? How are you, how are you today? Oh, fucking terrible. I don't want to be here. Do you know why? Because that's honest. That's going to lead to a real conversation. You already know you're expected to give the answer. Oh, great. I'm doing good. You? I've been worse. I've been worse. I've been... I've rarely ha ever had that question asked sincerely. I can... I don't care. See, I don't care if you ask me sincerely. You want me to say, Oh, I'm good. How are you? I'm going to tell you. If I woke up feeling like shit, I'm going to say, Shitty. You know, a lot of times people ask me at work, and I'll just be like, oh, I'm here. Because that is the answer. I am here. I am I'm at work. I don't necessarily want to be. I don't necessarily don't want to be. I'm just there in the moment. Small talk sucks. This opinion. This, this is a popular opinion. If, if you agree, like, let's hear it in the, in the comments. If your opinion is unpopular... You know, post it in the, in the Reddit. Don't post it in the comment. I'm kidding. Post it in the comments and, and on the Reddit. I want to read more of these Reddits, so post it there as well. Being an adult is better than being a kid. You know what else? Uh, uh, my take on this, because I saw, I don't know if I, if I got it in here or not, but there's the flip side of this coin. Someone is saying being a kid is better than being an adult, but everybody is wrong. Living is a nightmare. It's all awful. We're not gonna. This is way too long. We're not gonna read. We're not gonna read it. It's just the 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 real unpopular opinion is life is terrible. Chocolate chip cookies are better without the chocolate chip. That is not a chocolate chip cookie, sir. Read what you just said. I will read it again. Chocolate chips. Plural. Chocolate chips cookies. Is that how you say it? Am I saying it wrong all this time? I just call it chocolate chip cookies. Chocolate chips cookies are better without the chocolate chips. That's not a chocolate chip cookie then. It has no chocolate chips in it. It's not a chocolate chip cookie. It's just a plain gross cookie. And you're wrong. Even like the best made cookie dough. You're wrong, sir. I'll sound like a picky eater when I say that. No, you sound like a fucking terrible person. You sound like the worst person to have at a birthday party. If I'm given chocolate chip cookies and I'm really hungry, I'll break through the entire cookie to pull out any bit of chocolate I can. You are a monster. I just don't understand why people like to ruin the dough by mixing in chocolate chips. Why are you ruining someone's fucking work that they made, they created this food, and you have the audacity to fucking break it apart when you could have just not bought it, and you could have just gotten cookies that don't have the chocolate chips in it. Oh, oh somebody, uh, somebody gave them to you. Well, you could decline you say, no, thank you. I don't like those, and I don't want to waste... I don't want to be wasteful of your food. Because, you know, somebody worked hard to make those chocolate chip cookies. I don't want to break it apart and be like uh, an ingrate, you know. I just want to experience the softness or crispness of the dough without the dumb chocolate chips in the way. This person is broken. Who hurt you, post OP? Who hurt you? The cookies are just so much better without it. No! No! Of course, if I had an option, I'd take oatmeal. No! Oatmeal? As a woman. Like I am. As a woman, I don't mind when I'm with men. 
leave the toilet seat up. You didn't write this. You you logged in, left yourself logged in to 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 Reddit, and then your husband uh, got posted on your account. My fian oh, sorry, fiance, my fiance always leaves the toilet seat up, or always leaves toilet seat up, and I don't care in the slightest. We've lived together for a little over a year, and it has never bothered me. He has to lift it up after I use the restroom, and I have to put it down after he uses the restroom. It doesn't matter. I mean, I, I didn't get the comment. Somebody did point you should be closing it because of the, the splatters and stuff when you flush, but they meant the lid. These are people, most people don't even do that. You should close the lid to your toilet because when you flush it, all the, all the stuff does go everywhere there's been lots of studies to show that it's really gross but uh they're just talking about the actual seat not even the lid neither of these people close the lid um what but i don't know um here's the thing i don't necessarily i i will put the seat down if if and stuff i i grew up in a house of guys but i'll put the seat down it doesn't matter i don't really care but at the same time, if the seat is up and you didn't notice and you sit down and you fall through, that's on you. Why are you just so sitting willy-nilly and try, like, you should look. Always look before you sit anywhere. Make sure you're not going to sit on something or whatever. Why did you sit on that if the seat was, you know, so that, that's that a whole part of the argument is dumb. But uh, it doesn't matter. It, the last line of this really says it all. It, it doesn't matter. Who fucking cares? Put the seat up. Don't put the seat up. Don't complain if the other person doesn't, you know? That's just a weird thing to complain about. It's a weird sense of entitlement. Um, yeah, cause, And if you do, if you're going to insist that they put the seat down all the time, don't be surprised if they start just pissing through the seat and then they splatter on the seat and they don't wipe it up because again like i don't know there's this courtesy thing is to wipe it up but at the same time at this point you're all just terrible people who are allowed to have a preference hell yeah opinions we're gonna i'm dying on these hills today and these are the preferences you're allowed to have women are allowed to like only tall guys. I'm a short man, fuck you. Over short guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm short, uh, but but men are, are are allowed to only like, are allowed to like only physically fit women and vice versa. You know, it's, it's not wrong. Uh, be, just because someone isn't physically attracted to you doesn't mean they're in the wrong. Go and find someone who is attracted to you. People are allowed to have a preference. Now, this is true. This is very true. You cannot control who you're physically attracted to. This falls into the same thing with people that try to say, oh, like, you can't, you can't, you can't like a guy because he, you can't not want to date a guy because he's short. It's like saying, like, you can't not want to date a guy because he's a girl. You know, like, it's the same thing. It's none of your fucking business. Um, but here's the thing. If your feelings are only fi about physical looks and only that, you're very, um, you're a terrible person. Um, and if, you know, personality isn't mentioned here at all. And, um, yeah, again, you're allowed, you're allowed to have this preference. But if someone's personality doesn't play into it at all you're garbage you are not you are so not invited to my bat mitzvah is a terrible film never even heard of this film but now i need to see it hold on hold on let me look it up let me let's look this up you are so not you are so not invited to my bat mitzvah it's a 2023 film comedy drama with Adam Sandler. Oh, that's probably why we didn't hear about it. Stacy and Lydia are BFFs who always dreamed about having epic bat mitzvahs. However, 
things go start go to go comically awry when a popular boy in middle school drama threatens their friendship and their rite of passage. Okay. Okay. Well, I hope Adam Sandler is not one of the middle school boys, but okay, let's... Um... I don't know if I want to see it anymore. I kind of want to see it, but... It, it's a terrible film. I mean, it stars Adam Sandler. Um... Yeah, probably. I had a two-hour flight, decided to give it a try. I've read it on social media. It has really good reviews. It's the highest rating of Sandler's career. More than Uncut Gems? And 97% on Rotten Tomatoes? Okay. Okay. Not even gonna bother with that because... No! Uncut Gems is his best? Excuse me? No. Sleeping with your feet against the wall is the superior way of sleeping. Wait, what? Sleeping with your feet against the wall. Uh, what is the... Uh, I am somewhat a tall person. Okay, that doesn't affect me. One meter eighty. So my feet always reach the edge of the bed. To avoid the cold, I sleep with the blanket tucked under my feet. Okay. When I was sleeping in normal direction any moving during the night the blanket would was the blanket would result in the blanket slipping and cold air would pass i then switched to sleeping with my feet against the wall and the problem disappeared the blanket is stuck there my highly scientific conclusion is that it is the superior way of sleeping i mean sleep deeper man a little bit of a little bit of unblanketed air on your foot Waking you up? Sleep deeper. I like that fucking blanket will be like over like an inch of me. It'll start all over me because I need that blanket to sleep. I need a blanket. It is it's hot as shit. And I'm still needing a blanket to sleep. But then once I'm asleep, that blanket can come like mostly off and I don't. I'm gonna notice it unless the blanket says my name in which case I'm gonna jump awake and be like did that blanket just talk mid to late 90s Metallica is best Metallica my brother loves Metallica that's why I made sure I included this one but I'm just gonna say unpopular opinion Metallica sucks stop saying double you double you double you it's 2023 for fuck's sakes. You don't need to say this anymore. No one puts www into their browsers anymore. So just stop saying it. Especially in ads. You're paying for the time it takes to say this. It's true. Just go to www.reddit.com slash r slash unpopular opinions and 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 voice your opinion here i don't i don't know how the i don't know it's true it does take a lot of time to say www but it's fun it is fun to say um it does kind of sound boomery though i will do it does it does when you're like go to www dot Facebook.com like it's it's very boomery It's weird people get upset about their friends dating their spouse if they die Okay, I love my wife. I love my friends if I died in a car crash I would love my friends who I think are amazing to take care of my wife and kids I know they would be taken care of and loved and my kids could readily accept. It weird when people act like it's a betrayal. I would feel like my memory would be more alive this way as well. As long as no one is actively pursuing anything prior to a death, I would think it would be an awesome thing. Maybe most people just have shitty friends. Dude. Dude. 
do you really want your friends like spunking in your wife? I feel like it's just that is we don't want to think about who it is in general and like if you're dead if there's no feelings or if there's nothing being pursued prior to the death you're dead you sh you won't know about it and so there's not going to be a problem but now here's the thing if the person finds out about it because you know it's now come up that you want you would marry their wife when if they died or something You've now said that you want to spunk their wife and all that. And now it's become a weird thing. Like, this person's thought about it and stuff. It's weird because there's thought... Like, again, if, yeah, if there's nothing being pursued prior to the death, but then the dead person wouldn't even ever know about it then. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But I feel like this guy just, uh, I don't know. Maybe he wants to fuck his, his friends' wives or something if they die. Who knows? Marriage is an outdated technology. It fucking is. Marriage is just a legal way to say I love you. And if I'm lying, you can have half my stuff. When women, when women couldn't earn their own income and need a legal structure in relationships, marriage was the perfect tool. Today, women have independence and no longer need to be transferred from their father's house to their husband's via marriage contract. This pa pa practice is archaic and disempowering. I mean, it also, just because the court systems will heavily favor the women um, to the point where, like, I, I don't know if you guys know anything about Dave Foley and his, his divorce settlement and stuff in Canada, uh, but... The judges will side, um, like, 99% of the time uh, in favor of the woman, and, and sometimes in ridiculous ways. And, I don't know. The whole, the whole thing is, it's an archaic uh, thing, like, when you, because now the church isn't even involved most of the time, which is good. But uh, it, then it is legal, it is literally just a legal thing. Um... My wife and I didn't do a whole ceremony or anything. We just uh, had a child, and then the child was born. And because we already lived together, they're like, well, guess what? You're married now. It's called common law. Um, so, you know, marriage is just... It's, it's, it's a weird, dumb thing. It really is. This post is right. There's nothing wrong with the modern common use of literally... I literally think about this all the time. Even that if the definition had never been updated to reflect the common use, words literally change what they mean all the time because of the, uh, the way they're used uh, socially and everything. That does affect the meaning of a word more so than the original intended meaning of the word. Literally makes a hyperbolic statement more extreme. It is used correctly as a hyperbole. It's a hyper. <laughs> Sorry, I, can't, I have to do it. And when I see the word, I have to read it. Hyperbole. Hyperbole. And is consistent with the original definition of the word. A hyperbolic statement that includes the word literally does not have to be literally true because hyperbolic statements are not true. People that say it is used incorrectly when it's used in this way are demonstrating their own lack of understanding of the rules of language while trying to position themselves as some kind of intellectual superiors, which is much more obnoxious than using literally hyperbolically. If you say that someone who uses literally this way means figuratively, you are wrong. They do not mean figuratively. Figuratively does not make a hyperbolic statement more extreme. Figuratively does not mean the same thing as literally used hyperbolically. I literally don't give a fuck about any of this. Stop trying to, I don't know, just, I, stop dictating people's fucking language. 
uh, usage. Let people talk the way they want to talk, and if you don't like the way they talk, then don't talk to that person anymore. Don't be fucking, oh, you, you, know, you can't say those things like that. That's not what that means. Shut the fuck up. Literally, I literally don't give a fuck. As a parent, I literally don't care. Self-defense should have no limits. As a lawyer, I'm not. But I feel like this. this Knee-jerk reaction. We want to agree with this, but the reason why there's limits to self-defense is because... And it's gonna stop you from murdering the guy once you've managed to save yourself and you are no longer in danger. You are now the threat. And that is where it's no longer self-defense anymore. You have defended yourself and you could have left and you chose to stay there and beat him more until he died. Now you're a murderer. I, as, as a parent, I am not a lawyer and I am not... None of us are really, uh, um, not qualified to have an opinion on this. Uh, the Attorney Tom, so, uh, if someone throw the Attorney Tom, get his opinion on this, he's going to tell us it depends. Paper straws or environmental friendly cups are the worst. Oh, and they are. Oh my god, oh, I'm not even going to read this, this is too much work. We have, we have banned plastic in Canada here and it is a nightmare we're getting these these paper straws that just turn into a, a, a papery mush and they ruin the drink and the drink comes in still comes in a plastic cup though and the plastic cup just is now full of this drink that you, you can't drink because your straws mush and you just throw the whole thing away creates more garbage that way um just everything is a nightmare uh, everything like the whole they're, they're creating more waste. They're still wrapping those paper straws up in plastic little wrappers to keep them clean and safe and everything. Um, it's, 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 it's a nightmare. Stop letting the corporations blame us for them doing all the polluting. Yeah, we... Oh, okay, we do some of it, but literally, it's the corporations... That are killing the planet, not you with your fucking little paper straws. So uh, shut the fuck up. But milk is an S tier drink and goes with any and all meals. You are a monster. No, 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 monsters. Vanilla is by far the best flavor of ice cream. What was that milk one again? Oh my god, what well, is with all these monsters? Vanilla is the best flavor ice cream? Milk is a, a, a good drink. Both of these things belong in the F tier of the tier list. And you're putting them on the top? The tippity top? Did I go into the upside down world? Is this what Stranger Things is about? I stopped watching after season one. Is is this what it, it turned into? The, the upside down world is full of people that drinking milk and vanilla ice cream? People who apply to jobs should have their backgrounds thoroughly reviewed for any signs of cluster B disorder behaviors before getting hired. Many people in the corporate sector have cluster B behaviors, but then that cause misery for everyone else and prevent competent people from advancing. People should have to submit an evaluation for cluster B disordered behaviors before getting hired. So this person is all about discrimination for mental health problems. Very unpopular. Of all the unpopular opinions today, this man chose a hill. Then, holy shit. I mean, I see where he's coming from. Because they hired this person who's like this because that's just their personality. Everybody else is gonna suffer. 
but I, you can't discriminate on somebody because of their personality. I'm People have the right to waste food that they've paid for and destroy things that they rightfully own. This is America. I mean, it's right, but it's a weird hill to die on. This is a weird hill to die on. Yeah, yeah, you you buy a you buy a fucking sandwich from Subway. You take one bite, you throw it on the ground because you don't want to eat it. I'm just like, fuck it, I'm just gonna feed it to the animals and throw it on the ground here. You're, you're right to do that. Does that make you a wasteful, inconsiderate person? Yes. You still have the right to do it. You have the right to be wasteful and inconsiderate and an asshole if you choose to be. That is the great thing about freedom. The whole... It's inconsiderate to order a mojito thing is absurd. That's a thing? I didn't know it was inconsiderate to order a mojito, but I've never also ordered a mojito. Why is it inconsiderate? Leave a comment down below. Why is it inconsiderate to, to order a mojito? If every single person adhered to this notion, the bartender would rarely make mojitos or never make them at all. How does this make sense when it's part of their job and it's what I like to drink? I tip well, so what's the issue? I don't know. I really don't know. I've never heard that this was an issue. I saw a post recently said, If you order mojitos, you must have no respect for service workers and hate bartenders. Hmm, okay. Following that same logic, my patients must have no respect for me, for and hate me, when they ask me to do something that is part of my job. If you don't want to make mojitos, don't be a bartender, or find a place that doesn't re that does not require you to make them. It's not on the customer to not buy what they choose with their own money for your sake. It is true. If you're a bartender and you don't want to make mojitos, maybe you should approach your bar uh, bosses about getting rid of the mojito off the menu or something. But I've never actually... Uh, is it because it takes longer to make? Uh, there's probably a lot of steps to it or something. I don't know. It is very dumb. I tip. You tip good. That's good. You tip good. That's good. But also the bar should be paying better. Um, I don't know about where you guys are. We have laws that allow uh, employers to pay people like uh, wait, wait staff and um, delivery drivers less than minimum wage. And um, so they, that's why they rely on the tips. And that is a disgusting thing because it's called minimum wage. So if you're allowed to pay a wage that's lower than that, then that's the minimum and it's, it's, it's disgusting. Um, and they're like, well, it's because of tips and stuff. But that's, the thing is, it's called a tip. It's a gratuity. It's a bonus on top of your payment. It's not guaranteed anything. So it's, it's, it's very, it's disgusting. It's a disgusting thing. Fix your labor laws, governments. People that profit from publishing mugshots or body cam video of people being arrested for misdemeanor crimes are scum. Sure, videos of like police chases involving violent criminals are interesting to watch, but I've noticed lately there are many videos posted on channels of people being arrested for or just shoplifting or similar. These channels do a FOIA request on trivial crimes and then put their names on blast. So if whenever someone searches up their name, the footage or mugshot comes up. Generally, though, though the problem is, is usually those footage has to be interesting. They're not just putting any body camera or any interrogation footage. There has to be something in that footage that's interesting to watch to get the views on the channel. And that's why they're doing it. So that's... I, 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 it's, this is all public information. That's the thing. It's Freedom of Information Act. Uh, uh, act. It, it's public information. 
It's not, they're not putting, they're putting them on blast. Well, they're talking because they're talking about them and whatever. But it's, it's still public information. That's the, that the reason why we know about Florida Man all the time, all the different Florida Man stories is because Florida laws are done in a way that they, they have to like give that in, they, they publish that stuff already. So that's why you get those news stories all out of Florida and we, everybody else has the same fucked up people. But we don't hear about it all the time because the news isn't, you know, posting it all there. If, whatever. We're, in, I don't know. How about if you don't want to be put on blast for committing crimes, don't commit crimes. <laughs> Somehow, it's just aggravating how some YouTubers and websites make money while potentially ruining lives. You did it to yourself. You did. And that's what really hurts. You do it to yourself. That's right. We just quoted that. We just quoted that song. There are too many video games. Okay, Boomer. Okay. I was going to change to the next one. But this is the last one, apparently. So let's just... Let's just read what this guy has to say. I have always been a fairly avid gamer. Although it has had a decline, it has declined dramatically as I've gotten older. Oh, I wonder if there's a correlation there. Job, family, kids, etc. all take up more time. Nowadays, I find it very difficult, but I don't think it's just because of my time loss. There are constantly so many good quality games that are worth time playing. You can literally spend your entire life playing video games and still not get to enjoy them on my current docket of things. I want to play it is Diablo 4, Total Warhammer 3, Baldur's Gate 3, Tears of the Kingdom, and now Starfield? I get maybe four to five hours a week to be able to play a game, and it's just not feasible. That being said, even if I had seven to eight hours a day of video game, it still feels like an insurmountable, oversaturated market of video games where a top tier game is only for a couple of weeks before the next top tier game comes out. If I never bought another game again, I still have more games in my library than I can possibly enjoy. Sometimes there's just too much choice and it creates a sense of urgency in something that should be relaxing. My guy, you got anxiety because there's so many good games and that's a bad thing. You're excited because they're making games that are really good these days. And it's upsetting to you because you're an adult now and you have real, real life responsibilities. Well, even if I had seven to eight hours a day, as a child, I was playing more than seven to eight hours of video game a day. Um, you know, my guy, it's calm down, calm down. There's a lot of video games, it's true. Too many? No, because you know why? Don't play them all. You don't have to play them all. I know you want to, it seems to be that's your problem. You just want to play all the games, but you're an adult now and you gotta understand that sometimes you just can't always get what you want. But if you try sometimes, you might find you get what you need. Anyway. That was it. That was unpopular opinions. Uh, make sure to leave some comments, like, subscribe, all the cool stuff, you know, and stay tuned for the next one.